to speak a little about Rosh Hashanah and some of the ideas of Rosh Hashanah. So one of the main ideas of Rosh Hashanah is Teshuvah, the returning to Hashem. And if we say, some say that it's, 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 it's hard to do it, but it's clo- the Torah says it's close to you. In your mouth, it's very close to you. In your mouth and in your heart to do it. Why did it say in your mouth first and then in your heart? Because we have with our mouth and our words have power. The words we use are, are powerful words. And they, that, that is what affects our heart. So we, on Rosh Hashanah especially, we focus on the prayers and, and, and spilling our soul in front of Hashem to bring us back to Hashem, so to speak. So since the prayers of Rosh Hashanah are such an important part of this tshuva, of this returning to God, we really have to have intention in our prayers and prepare ourselves for prayers. And the days before Rosh Hashanah are also in preparation of Rosh Hashanah. The energy that we're building and the spiritual connections we're making is really helping us in this preparation of Rosh Hashanah. We always recall the story of Abraham and the binding of Isaac on Rosh Hashanah because this is one of our greatest merits as a nation. And we always want to bring that up to to God that he should remember that and the love and, and, and the, the, the devotion of our fathers that, that really is connected to us and that merit stands for us forever. On Rosh Hashanah, so to speak, the day before Rosh Hashanah, we do the annulment of vows because it's very important that we, we try to let go of any vows that we may have made. So God forbid if something that we don't do that we we're supposed to do, we don't want the negative effect of that. So that's why we try to do that in front of uh, at least three people, that they act as the, the courthouse, so to speak, of forgiving our vows. We abound in charity on the day before Rosh Hashanah. We should give a lot of charity. We're asking this charity from Hashem. We study a lot of Torah on the day before Rosh Hashanah and it, it, it go, involve ourselves in good deeds. So one of the main ideas of praying on Rosh Hashanah is that we're anointing Hashem as a king upon us. We, we make him our king. We, we're showing him, we want him to be our king. Every year on Rosh Hashanah, Hashem renews his desire to create the world and to become a king of the world. So we're showing him, we want you, we need you, and we want you to reign over us and give us your blessings. So that's one of the main intentions of the prayers of Rosh Hashanah, that we, we, we are accepting Hashem as our king, and obviously he's our father. So Bezar Hashem, we should achieve that in our prayers. We wish each other a good year on Rosh Hashanah, because Hashem sees us, that we really are wishing this to each other, and he, that makes an influence on him, that he gives it to us, because we are wishing it. We do, on the Kiddush, we do all of the simanim, the different simanim that's in the Mahzor. Some of the different are, are the pomegranates, the dates, and it's all connected to the Hebrew words of, of the, the hint and the allusion that's within these signs that we're using on Rosh Hashanah. There's a beautiful prayer from Levi Yitzhak Abarditche, who was a holy rabbi. He used to sing on Rosh Hashanah, he used to sing this to Hashem. The dwellers above and the dwellers below shake and quake in fear of your name. The dwellers in chasms the dwellers in graves shiver and quiver in fear of your judgment. But the just in the Garden of Eden burst into song, sing your name. That is why I, Levi Yitzhak of Berdichev, come before you with my prayer and with my plea. What do you want of Israel? Speak. To whom do you speak? To the children of Israel. Talk. To whom do you talk? To the children of Israel. Command. Whom do you command? The children of Israel. Thus you shall bless. Whom do you command to bless? The children of Israel. Therefore I ask of you, what do you want of Israel? 
Do you not have many nations, Chaldeans, Persians, Ishmaelites, Midianites? What do you want of Israel? What then? It must be that Israel is dear to you who are called children of the omnipresent God. And then Rebbe Yitzchak would start the prayer of benedictions. And this is the song of Rebbe Yitzchak. In the morning of Rosh Hashanah, we open the ark in order to awaken the compassion of Hashem in heaven and that the gates of heaven be open to us while, to our prayers while we are supplicating for Hashem. We sing the Avinu Malkeinu and we sing other Baruch Hashem in the Iraqi Siddur and all the other Siddur. There are many different beautiful poems that we sing on Rosh Hashanah. We blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. There's a verse that says, Min hametzar karatiya anani v'merchavya. I call God from my distress, from this narrow situation, and he answered me expansively. And this is the shofar. It starts small and gets big, that we, we call out from this distressful situation and God will answer us in a large way. The, so, the shofar has no notes. It's just a plain sound. It's, it's designed to arouse us deep in our soul. Wake us up from the sleep of the vanity of the world and to wake us up back to the truth and what matters in life and what matters in our day-to-day -day life and for the accomplishment of our mission in this world. And we use a ram's horn to remind us again of the binding of Isaac, that the ram took his place. So we're using this horn, so to speak, to remind Hashem, so to speak, of the miracle and, and the wonder of this test with Abraham and Isaac and to bring us the merit again. Another reason is that when a king is, is crowned, they, they blow horns and trumpets. So, so to we blow this horn to announce the king, that Hashem, Hashem is the king. The Rosh Hashanah is the first of the 10 days of tshuva. So we blow the shofar to, to, to wake us up, to, to do tshuva, to do the returning to Hashem. The third reason we blow the shofar is to remind us how we stood at the Mount, of Mount Sinai and the sound of the shofar was heard. The fourth reason is to remind us of the words of the prophet, which are compared to a ram's horn, that it says, whoever heard the sound of the horn and doesn't take the warning, and, and the, the, the voice of the prophet, so to speak. The fifth reason is to remind us of the destruction of the temple and the, and the, the alarms of the, the enemy that they sounded that. And we, we, we ask Hashem that he hears the sound of the ram's horn to rebuild the temple. The, another reason is that, like we said, to, to make us tremble. And it, makes, it brings the fear of Hashem in our heart when we hear this loud sound and wakes us up back to return and reminds us of the day of judgment. And also it reminds us of the gathering of the dispersed of Israel that we wait for. And that it says on that day, the great shofar will be sounded. Bezrat Hashem. There's a beautiful story of the Baal Shem Tov who commanded his student, Rabbi Zev Kitsis, to learn all of the secret meanings behind the blast of the shofar because he was going to blow the shofar for the Baal Shem Tov on Rosh Hashanah. He learned all the secret meanings and wrote them down on a slip of paper to look at during the service, this Rabbi Zev. He put the paper in his, in his, in his clothing. The time for the shofar blowing arrived. He's looking for the paper. He can't find the paper. He can't remember the meanings. It's, you know, all of a sudden he's, his mind is a blank. He feels terrible. He, he blows the shofar without any of the intention. He's crying bitter tears that he didn't do what his rabbi wanted him to do. Afterwards, the Baal says to him, you know, where the king lives, there are many rooms, and there's different keys for every room and every lock, but the master key of all is the axe, because with the axe, you can break, you can open all the locks and all the gates. So is the shofar. The secret meanings are the key all the different keys for the rooms. And every gate has another meaning. But the master key is the broken heart. When we truthfully break our heart and come before Hashem, we can enter into all the rooms with Hashem, Holy One, blessed be He.